Where there are bacteria, there are bacteriophages, or viruses that infect bacteria. Given our bodies are positively packed with bacteria, it comes as no surprise that they are loaded with phages too. However, while we know quite a bit about the bacteria living in and on us, our understanding of the so-called phageome and what it means for our health and well-being is less clear. Luckily, emerging research is bringing this mysterious ome into focus. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, the American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. I'm Madeline Barron, Science Communication Specialist at ASM. Just like there are a lot of different bacteria in this world, there are a diverse array of phages too, and these microbes come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. They generally function by attaching to a bacterial cell and injecting their genome into the host cell, either killing it outright by lysis, as is the case for lytic phages, or integrating their genome into that of the host, known as temperate or lysogenic phages. The infectious process is highly specific, with a particular phage targeting specific bacteria, even down to the strain level. Now, from a health standpoint, people may be familiar with phages because of phage therapy, in which viruses are used alone or alongside antibiotics to treat bacterial infections by targeting and killing the pathogen. Though phage therapy has been around for quite some time, it has been getting more attention in recent years due to the rise of antibiotic resistance. There's also been interest in using phages for other applications as well, including to combat foodborne pathogens. This might involve treating crops with phages to limit bacterial burdens and sterilizing surfaces in food production facilities. While these are targeted uses of phages to mitigate problematic bacteria, the reality is that phages are everywhere, all the time, and that our bodies host a vast community of them. In fact, one microliter of saliva has roughly 100,000 phages, whereas one gram of feces has over 1 billion, indicating the gut is particularly loaded. The composition of the phageome varies depending on body region, which makes sense given the population of bacteria, the targets of phage, differ as well. The reasons for these differences are varied, ranging from sex, diet, geographic location, and more, and researchers are working to learn more about the phage communities throughout the body, with a particular emphasis on the gut. But what are all of these phages doing exactly? Do they matter for our health? The answer appears to be yes, as scientists increasingly uncover associations between the phageome and disease. For example, focusing on the gut, research has revealed that the phageome of patients with inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, a set of conditions characterized by chronic intestinal inflammation, is different from people without IBD, exhibiting a reduced richness and broad depletion of the phage community. A recent study examining the mucosal phageome in the ileum, or part of the small intestine, of patients with Crohn's disease, a form of IBD, suggests that these differences are there even when patients' disease is in remission. Moreover, using mouse models of IBD, the researchers showed that viral particles from the Crohn's disease ileal mucosa may exacerbate inflammation, highlighting a role of phages in disease pathogenesis. Another study assessing the effects of fecal microbiota transplants on the phageome of ulcerative colitis patients, another form of IBD, suggested that transplants from healthy donors can modulate the phage community. The researchers even identified a specific temperate phage from a donor that was putatively associated with disease remission in fecal transplant recipients. The phage was found integrated into the genome of a type of bacteria predicted to produce B vitamins, which are important for gut health and some of which can be low in people with IBD, indicating phages could be a good indicator of important, perhaps unrecognized bacteria in disease. Given the varying compositions in health and disease states, the phageome could also be useful for diagnostics and for keeping tabs on disease presence and activity. Notably, other diseases have also been associated with an altered gut phageome, including colorectal cancer, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic disorders. But what are the mechanisms underlying the links between phages and disease? Those are still unclear, though it is likely that shifts in the phage community reflect and influence changes in the bacterial community, which can, in turn, influence its metabolic functions and interactions with the host and immune responses. Perhaps phages keep pathogenic bacteria in check, and their loss in the setting of disease promotes expansion of these less favorable bacteria to then promote disease, as proposed by the authors of one of the IBD studies we just discussed. Though they infect bacteria, phages can be internalized into human cells with implications for various cellular processes, including modulating cellular growth and eliciting anti- or pro-inflammatory responses depending on the host, for example, those with or without IBD. What's interesting is that the phageome in a particular body region may influence processes in other areas too. 
For example, scientists discovered that individuals with a higher abundance of cotovirolese phages, an order of gut phage that has since been reclassified into various families within the class cotovirocetes, performed better in executive functioning and verbal memory than those with greater levels of microviridae, another common group of gut phages. The ratio of these two phages may alter host bacterial metabolism and, via the gut-brain axis, influence cognitive function. The ratio of these two phages may alter host bacterial metabolism and, via the gut-brain axis, influence cognitive function. In fact, when microbiota from human donors with high levels of specific cotovirocetes phages were transplanted into mice, the mice performed better on tests that measured their ability to learn and remember objects. Moreover, when a specific phage found in the memory-associated class was transferred into fruit flies, it similarly increased memory scores and upregulated memory-involved brain genes, suggesting even a single phage has impacts on cognition. This study highlights the crosstalk between the gut, brain, and phages. Now, we've talked a lot about the gut here, as a lot of research has focused on this region, but as mentioned earlier, phages are all over the body, and they have implications for health and disease in those regions too, including in the skin, respiratory tract, and mouth. It is similarly valuable to study the phage communities in these areas, as doing so can uncover previously unknown associations between these bacterial viruses and the health of their human host. It is also worth mentioning that humans are not the only ones hosting a diverse repertoire of phages. There are trillions of phages on the planet, in and on animals, plants, and around the environment, and they have ramifications for animal and planetary health. For instance, there are loads of phages in the ocean which kill marine bacteria to release nutrients and organic matter into the surrounding water. These nutrients are consumed by other bacteria to support their growth. They can also infect and lyse marine algae, thus helping to mitigate algal blooms. Given all of these connections to health across hosts and ecosystems, studying phage communities is valuable for determining how best to use them for diagnostic, monitoring, or even therapeutic purposes. However, studying the phageome can be tricky for several reasons. For example, unlike bacteria, which have a relatively conserved marker in the 16S rRNA gene, there isn't a single universally conserved gene or marker that can be used to identify and categorize phages. This can make broad, culture-independent studies a challenge. Sampling can also be difficult, and there is no standardization of sequencing or analysis methods across studies, limiting our ability to draw robust conclusions about the phageome of a given organism, body region, or environment. However, these are not insurmountable challenges. Metagenomic analyses have already opened doors for studying phages and phage communities in ways that were once impossible. Advancements in culturing diverse bacteria, and thus the phages that prey upon them, have expanded opportunity to get insights into these abundant microbes. As analytical tools continue to advance, so will our insights on the phageome and all of its mysteries. That's all for today. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to ASM's YouTube channel for more microbial minutes. As always, I want to thank you for listening. Thank Ray Ortega for production, and I'll talk to you next time.